This is part two of 2.08, absolute zero, liquids and solids. So another cool thing about liquids is vapor pressure. High energy liquid molecules escape into vapor phase. If you pour a liquid like water into an empty container and seal it, you will find that some water mo molecules will enter the gas phase above the liquid. So like when you put something in the refrigerator and you take off the cover and there's droplets of water on the cover, right? That's what this is talking about. The gas molecules will actually exert a pressure called vapor pressure. This vapor pressure happens even when the liquid is not boiling. Each molecule in a liquid has a kinetic energy. At any given time, some of those molecules have more kinetic energy than others. Those few liquid molecules with the highest kinetic energy can break free if the intermolecular forces and move into the gas phase. As more molecules go into the gas phase, they exert a pressure back down on the surface of the liquid. Some of those vapor molecules slow down and condense back into liquid. Because the container is sealed, a steady state or equilibrium occurs where the rate of vaporization equals the rate of condensation and a steady vapor pressure is achieved. At higher temperatures, more liquid molecules have a sufficient kinetic energy to go into the gas phase, thus increasing vapor pressure. You know that. You know that if you set out a glass of water outside in the middle of summer, it's going to evaporate a lot quicker than if you have the glass of water sitting outside when it's only 40 degrees out Fahrenheit. Vapor pressure and boiling are closely related. So let's read the caption first. Heating a liquid increases the kinetic energy of the molecules and increases the number of molecules that escape into the vapor phase. Vapor pressure increases with temperature until at some point the liquid boils. You can increase the total pressure above a liquid artificially by putting a lid on top of the pot. In this case, the trapped water vapor exerts more pressure back on the liquid. So we put a cover on and man, it's pushing down. Therefore, the temperature of the liquid must go higher for more molecules to escape. As a result, the liquid will boil at a higher temperature. This is the principle behind a pressure cooker. By contrast, if you reduce the total pressure above a liquid, as happens when you cook in high altitudes, then the liquid does not need to reach as high a temperature to boil. If you ever live up in the mountains, you'll notice that when you make things like a box cake or look at any of the boxes in your pantry of like noodles and it will say stuff like you have to cook it longer at higher altitudes and that's because you're boiling it at a lower temperature so you need to cook it longer to make sure the food gets done. Intermolecular forces explain many liquid properties. Liquids have volume but no definite shape. The strength of intermolecular forces compared to kinetic energy determines the phase of a substance. For liquids, intermolecular forces are greater than the kinetic energy. Intermolecular forces hold liquid molecules close together, but the molecules can slide past one another, like marbles in the back of a truck, and move about or flow. So that's talking about flowing. The sparse spaces, so the little spaces between liquid molecules, allow the molecules to fl flow and compress or squeeze together only slightly. Intermolecular forces bind liquid molecules at a surface to form a film and support particles, so that's surface tension. Liquid molecules with high kinetic energy can escape into the vapor phase and exert vapor pressure. When vapor pressure equals total pressure above it, the liquid will boil. All right, so let's talk about solids. How do solids compare with liquids and gases? In gases, molecules are far apart and they move rapidly and randomly throughout their container, colliding with one another and with the walls of the container. In liquids, the molecules are much closer together. They contact, slide around one another, vibrate, and move from place to place. In solids, the molecules are in contact with one another, but they do not move from place to place. They are held rigidly and can only vibrate or move a little bit. What holds the molecules of a solid together? The molecules of any substance have kinetic energy. Remember, all molecules move. Molecules are also affected by intermolecular forces, the forces between molecules. What ultimately determines the phase of substance is how the strength of intermolecular forces compares to the kinetic energy of the molecules. In solids, the strength of the intermolecular forces 
far outweighs the internal kinetic energy of the atoms or molecules. In other words, the molecules are interacting with each other and they're just barely moving, so that's what keeps them in the solid phase. Strong intermolecular forces give solids definite volume and a variety of shapes. Intermolecular forces work over short distances. Because the kinetic force of molecules is low, the intermolecular forces are very strong. The solid molecules are tightly packed, giving them a definite volume. The solid molecules can be packed in a variety of ways, and as a result, solids have different shapes. The first shape is called a crystalline solid. The solid molecules are arranged in orderly, repeating patterns. Examples of crystals include diamonds, gemstones, rocks, sugar, and salt. You can also have amorphous solids. Amorphous solids, I kind of like to think of as like super, super thick liquids. So the solid molecules lack a regular internal structure. Amorphous solids are more like supercooled liquids where the molecules have been permanently frozen. An example includes glass, plastic, and rubber. Think about how you can bend rubber and plastic and how if you heat glass up, it flows really easily. So amorphous solids are kind of like runny solids or solids that you can bend and manipulate a little bit. Chemical bonds produce various crystal types. The atoms within a crystal substance can be bound by ionic, covalent, or metallic bonds. Each bond type produces crystals with different properties. These are the four major types. Ionic, so hopefully you remember hearing that word. So we have a metal with a nonmetal. Atoms are metals bonded to nonmetals. Ionic bonds are strong, such as those in table salt. Covalent network, all atoms are strongly covalently bonded to one another covalent meaning sharing the electrons, as the carbon atoms and diamonds and the atoms of quartz, which is a common rock. Metallic bonds form between metal cations and a sea of electrons. So if you have a piece of copper, gold, or silver. Covalent molecular is covalently bonded molecules are held together by intermolecular forces such as glucose. And depending on how they're held together, they have a higher melting point all the way down to a low melting point, low conductivity to high. You don't need to know this. I just wanted to show it to you. Crystal structures have various shapes. The simplest arrangement of atoms or molecules that retains the basic shape of a crystal is called the unit cell. Unit cell. In crystals, an arrangement of atoms or ions in a particular geometric shape, like this. Unit cells are arranged in repeating structures called a crystal lattice. Crystal lattices can also be used and arranged in various ways to form the overall structure of the crystal. In a cubic unit cell, for example, all angles are at right angles and all sides are of equal length. So it's like a big cube. So if you think of table salt, it's all these NAs and Cl molecules and they are arranged basically like a cube. Crystalline solids of the same types have various forms called allotropes. Even crystals of the same substance can have different forms. These different forms are called allotropes. For example, carbon has many allotropes. For example, pure carbon can be diamonds. Each carbon is covalently bonded to four neighboring carbon atoms to form a rigid, hard structure, the hardest naturally occurring solid. Or it can be graphite. Pure carbon can be like the stuff in the pencils. Carbons are arranged in hexagons, which in turn are arranged in flat sheets. The sheets slide along each other, making graphite very soft. And so that's why it slides out of the pencil and makes the marks on your paper. Fullerenes were discovered in 1985. These molecules have 60 carbon atoms arranged in hollow spheres, much like a soccer ball. Fullerenes, or buckyballs, named after architect R. Buckminster Fuller, Formed, form when vaporized carbon condenses in an inert gas environment such as helium. And they have numerous applications including superconducting salts and biological catalysts. Strong intermolecular forces and sparse or little intermolecular spaces limit the movements of solids. So here's some table salt and then this is what it would look like if we could see the sodium and chlorine atoms. Consider a crystal such as sodium chloride. 
As in any solid, the atoms are packed tightly with no or little space between them. The intermolecular forces are strong. So the forces between each of these atoms, between each of these molecules, is very strong. And it limits the movement of the atoms. Because there is no space between the atoms and the solid, solids are incompressible. You can't squeeze them together. And therefore retain their shape under most conditions. Extremely high pressures, such as hundreds or thousands of atmospheres, can change crystal shapes. Amorphous solids do not have definite shape. When substances cool into amorphous solids, they retain fluid-like properties and cool into a rigid form. As such, they can man be manipulated into any desired shape. For example, glass can be formed into a flat window, a bottle, or an intricate sculpture. When glass breaks, it does not break into definite identical shapes like a crystal, but rather into randomly shaped fragments. The ability of amorphous solids to be molded makes them very useful. Another example is rubber, which is found in automobile tires and gaskets. Plastics are also amorphous solids that can be molded into many shapes and sizes. So because glass is amorphous, it can be shaped into a number of ways, then cooled or frozen into place. And an amorphous solid is a solid that lacks a regular internal molecular structure. Solids are the most prominent low temperature phase. Solids have definite shape and volume. The strength of intermolecular forces in the molecules of solids far outweighs the kinetic energy. So intermolecular forces much stronger than the fact that they're moving around. Intermolecular forces hold solid molecules rigidly together with little or no space. And the kinetic energy is so low that the molecules can only vibrate. Solids form either crystallis or amorphous solids. The types and strength of bonds within crystals determine their types and properties. Crystals have unit cells that repeat to form the crystal lattice. Unit cells of various crystal shapes differ in the relative lengths of the sides and of the angles where the sides meet. Crystals of the same solid may have allotropes, different forms with different properties. Solids properties, not fluid, not compressible, definite shape and volume, very strong intermolecular forces. So as I'm sure you can tell, I included a lot of slides from the K-12 lessons for these because there was some interesting stuff. I really, really suggest that you do the pre-quiz worksheet um, before you take the quiz because the quiz will be modeled after that. So we had a lot of slides, 33 slides today, but not everything's going to be on the quiz. So make sure you do the pre-quiz and that will give you an idea of the most important things that you need to know. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bye.